This is the next ATV project. This is a uh, Yamaha Grizzly 600 4x4. I uh, don't know what year it is yet. But uh, again, picked it up for short money and for good reason. It's got some serious issues. Uh, cosmetically, it's not that bad. If I had to guess on the year, I'd say it's probably around an 02. I did a little bit of research on these a while back when I first got it and kind of figured out that it's probably an 02, somewhere in that vicinity. But uh, story on this, if, uh, if my information is correct, is that I'm the third owner. And the guy I bought it off of, he had uh, gotten it for free. And he had somebody look at it and they said the motor was seized and he didn't want to put any money into it. So that was as far as they supposedly went with it. And the story behind the motor being seized is that the original owner, uh, his son, who uh, races quads and bikes and stuff, is a little wild, and that he jumped it into a lake. And they sank it in the lake, and they pulled it out. And after they pulled it out, they couldn't get it restarted, and they just kind of parked it and left it. And there it sat for several years before... Uh, the guy I bought it from came along and saw it there and said, what are you doing with that? And the guy told him basically just get it out of here because he had already replaced it with a new one. So so now I've got it. So uh, at the very least, it's got a seized motor. And, uh, of course, the other issue is that with the water and having, having the thing sit so long without anybody doing anything to it, uh, there could be a whole long laundry list of things going on here but my first uh, thought is that uh, see if I can get the motor unstuck and see how bad the cylinder is and the uh, valve train see if we can't get the motor running and if it's not too bad to get the motor running then it might be worth investing in doing something else with it and actually going further so uh, that's about all there really isn't much to see this an aftermarket, uh, there's, a, there's a winch on it. Got an aftermarket uh, winch set up. And uh, I noticed that when I bought it, the tires uh, actually still have decent tread on them. Slow leaks on a couple of them. Might be just not sealing at the beads that well. But not going to worry about that for now. It's a big sucker, 600. So, back in 02, it was probably the biggest. And uh, people who originally owned this probably were the type of people who bought the big, biggest, baddest, and best. So, uh, I got a little makeshift here. This is falling down. They got a little held up with a little piece of wire. Mono shock set up in the back, which it's interesting for such a big quad. Of course, electrics, who knows how they are, being that this thing got so wet. Uh, it's got a push button on off, two wheel drive, four wheel drive, speedometer, key still with it. So, alright, so, uh, February 18th, 2011, and it is unbelievably warm today. It is actually, uh, they projected a high of possibly even uh, 58 today, and it feels almost like it's that now. I'm actually out here with a jacket on, but I don't even need it. And the snow is melting like crazy. We got a ton of snow here, and it's just melting. And the uh, noise you hear in the background is the water coming off the roof. All that snow on the roof is melting like crazy. So anyways, what I'm going to do today, because the weather's so nice, I dug this out. Over the past couple days of warm weather, I dug it out. But the weather's scheduled to turn back to freezing cold tomorrow. So we're going to go from one extreme to the other. So I wanted to dig this out today and see if I can't start poking around with it a little bit before the uh, weather turns bad again. Because we're far from over with, far from through with winter here. And, uh... So first order of business is going to be to remove all the plastics. 
and the racks. That's going to be uh, my first step here, so that I can get to this um, get to this motor. I read online in a uh, service manual disassembly procedures. Got the basic gist of it. One of the things that I was glad to see was it did talk about that a lot of the engine service or service to the motor that you would do on this model, you don't have to remove the motor to do it. So to keep it in the frame. What I'd love to do is I'd love to get this down in the basement. The problem is it's not going to want to fit through the, uh, the doorway at the bottom there. However, if I get all the plastics off, the floorboards off, and take the wheels off, uh, and the racks off, then my overall width of the thing is going to be significantly uh, narrower, and um, then I'll check and see, if, I'll take a measurement and see if it'll fit down there, and if it'll fit down there, then I'll use a, uh, I'll use a come along or something, and I'll get this thing down into the basement, because it'll be a lot easier to work on down there. Alright, so I'm just going to get started on unbolting whatever I can unbolt as far as racks, plastic, stuff like that. Uh, a couple of these covers were already unbolted when I got it. We're just giving me loose. This cover right here goes here. The screws are missing. This cover right here goes here. And then there's a cover on the other side that's also uh, missing, but I've got that in the truck. So it looks like I've got all the plastics. Alrighty, so I'll get started. All right, getting the front rack off was pretty simple. The uh, front supports go down through here, and then there's just a couple of bolts down underneath here come out. And uh, then on the top, you get a couple of bolts here and here and then I had to get of course the control for the uh, winch which was a couple of u-bolts hold that onto the rack had to disconnect that and disconnect all the wires and then there's a, a little uh, some sort of an accessory receptacle or something that is on the rack uh, it's actually right here this little sucker right here the wires for that go down through a grommet right here and they just a couple of quick disconnects disconnect that pull the grommet out and that comes out got the rack off and that actually is also what pretty much holds this whole plastic front fender assembly on except for the fact that in order to get this out it appears you need to pull forward and out and you can't do that because this which looks like it's an aftermarket bumper assembly maybe with the uh, the winch set up and everything this brush guard here that's protecting the lamps is actually in the way so I'm going to just remove these four bolts here to get this off and then also these fender flares these flares and skirts actually come down and they attach to the uh, fronts of the floorboards and then they also attach well where they aren't already broken off or have parts missing they attach there's a screw missing there already they attach inside here, so I got to undo that screw on the other side. It's still there. Undo it from the floorboards. Take that front brush guard off, and I might be able to get this whole assembly off in one big piece. Here's what it looks like when you get the uh, front rack and fender assembly all off. Here's the uh, whole assembly. The uh, headlights stay with the um, with that front fender assembly, so you're just going to make sure you unclip these two uh, these two plugs right here to the headlights and this gaggle of wires here is actually for the winch so these go back to the battery and uh, these go to the winch which brings up a good point uh, I didn't have to worry about it because the battery in this is completely dead and junk but if you were taking this apart and the battery was still alive first step you'd want to do is actually uh, take the seat off and disconnect or remove the battery altogether because these wires could very well be live I'm not even sure if they're fused or not I haven't checked and seen how they run but since it's an aftermarket type of winch setup I'm not sure uh, pretty sure it's aftermarket but it's like it just runs along the frame wire tied and goes right into the battery box so uh, one of these wires would have been hot more than likely and if it touches the frame you're gonna have some fireworks sparks at the very least so, all right, so now with that whole front assembly off, you can start to see a little bit better into the front here, but it's clear that the, uh, the other big thing you've got to remove to really gain access to that cylinder head area is going to be the tank. And now with the plastics uh, off, 
the tank's fully exposed. You can see the tank just bolts on pretty simply enough, front and in the rear. So I'm gonna remove the seat and the tank. Uh, I just removed the seat. That's simply you just reach underneath this area right here and there's a lever you grab and pinch and it disengages the seat. It exposes the battery box area which is all full of leaves and crap and there's some corrosion in there. Uh, it looks like we got a little tool bag here. And here's the air cleaner box. The uh, screws are missing and it's all disassembled. No mouse nest in there. It looks like that's probably a breather line right there. So let's see. Huh. That. Oh, this must be the intake. Okay, this this goes in this hole right here on the top. So this must sit up high like that. And it's the air intake. It's really high so that you could uh, go in some water and there's a little space that is underneath the tank there that this just sits up in. That allows this thing to breathe until the water level gets pretty darn high. Yeah, it looks like there's even supposed to be a, maybe a gasket that goes in. Yeah, I can see it. There's a, bits of, of it left in there. There's an O-ring that goes in that battery box so that when this is screwed down, it's actually somewhat watertight. So, anyways, uh, back of the tank's already unbolted. So I'm going to unbolt the front. So somebody already had this apart far enough to uh, play around with it being seized. So we will take the uh, tank off next. Okay, after I disconnected the fuel line, took out the uh, front bolts that were holding the tank and the rear bolts were already missing. Uh, the tank comes right out. And then uh, there's this rubber like diaphragm thing here. It's, uh covers up the top of the carburetor and the top of the motor. And that just appears to be just laying in here. There's a bunch of leaves and debris and stuff stuck in there. And let's clean that off a little and pull that off. And that gets us to the uh, top motor mount right here. And then I can see where if you disconnect that motor mount bolt and then these four bolts right here you can take this part this cross brace right out and that looks like that's going to give me the access to the uh, cylinder head well now would be a good time to mention that the spark plug is missing uh, I had actually noticed that when I first picked it up and the boot was just hanging down so I thought I was hoping that it was just disconnected but it's actually missing so who knows how long ago somebody took that spark plug out and how long that hole's just been open to the cylinder, although it was already seized anyways. My guess would be that somebody probably initially tried to pump the water out when it was first dunked in the lake or at some point later maybe they had the spark plug out and were putting some penetrating lubricant or some solvent in there to try and see if they could break it free. I haven't tried putting a wrench or anything on the crankshaft to see how bad it's stuck, but the pull starter doesn't want to move at all. So it's pretty seized. Uh, now for a quick anatomy lesson on this beast. Uh, basically what you're looking at is this part right here that I've got my hand on, this is actually a valve cover. Um, and uh, right here, this line right here is where this mates to the top of the cylinder head. So there's a gasket there and actually you can see RTV sticking out of it. That actually looks factory original, uh, judging from the age of the uh, sealant that's on there. So that's a good sign that this hasn't been really a part. I'd rather have it this way than have it somebody monkeyed with it. But anyways, uh, so this assembly comes off and then that sits on, you can see there's the joint right there, that sits on top of the cylinder head. So this part right here with the fins on it is actually the cylinder head. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that and think that the piston's actually going up inside and down here, but the actual cylinder is down here. This is actually the break point right there. So you've got a cylinder head gasket right in here between these two fins. And so from here up, 
is cylinder and from here down I mean uh, from here up is cylinder head and from here down is the um, uh, cylinder so your pistons actually uh, popping out right about here and going up and down here so you can see it doesn't have that much of a stroke but it's probably got a pretty pretty significant bore being that it's a 600 uh, cc and actually we don't know the exact displacement on it but going on that assumption and so in order to get this apart the bolts that would hold the cylinder head are going to be much uh, beefier at least I would assume they'd be beefier than these little suckers right here so probably the first step is to remove this valve cover and then that will probably expose some bolts that are inside underneath this cover that actually hold the bolt the uh, cylinder head on and then the other issue of course is that you've got to disconnect the exhaust pipes and the um, uh, intake manifold here and uh, that being said I guess what I'll do is I'll see if I can't find the proper size drive for these allen head screws on the top here and pop that cover off. So removing this top motor mount is pretty easy. Uh, you got four 12 millimeter bolts that bolt it down to here and then you get this big 14 millimeter bolt long bolt that attaches it to the top of the motor and then there's a uh, little wire clip right here that basically holds the uh, throttle cable up in this position so I guess it won't sag down in there and then uh, speaking of throttle cables I just noticed that the side cover for the throttle is on the carburetor is missing and kind of think of it the uh, throttle's not working actually now that I look at it that looks like it's in yeah that's fully wide open so that carb throttle butterfly was just stuck Ooh, talk about yeah that car is gonna definitely need some serious attention hopefully I'll be able to clean it and rebuild it okay these little bolts are uh, five millimeter luckily I have a five millimeter for my uh, ratchet and um, some of them uh, they've come out and they've been pretty badly corroded these are the ones at the perimeter here. I'm assuming this gasket material actually goes on the other side of these so these don't really see any uh, oil. These other long ones here on the side here, they're coming out, they've got a film of oil on them. Which I'm kind of glad to see. Um, it would indicate to me that there was still some oil up here on the top end and that I actually saw some lubrication so maybe I won't see uh, too much corrosion inside here. But I've got to finish taking them out. The other reason I wanted to stop at this point was to also, uh, let anybody know that uh, right down here in this little well where I've got my finger, there's, there's a bolt there and it's kind of hidden. So you want to definitely make sure you hit that one or you're going to never uh, get this off. Okay, some of these bolts are uh, pretty short, like that one there. And then some of them are long, like this one out here. See, that's really long. So... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to worry about which ones go where right now. That's a medium-sized one. Because I'm going to look at the parts right down. And that's going to tell me which ones, which size bolts go where later during reassembly. So for right now, I'm just going to take them all out and put them in a container for safekeeping. Okay, I took all the bolts out and I tried removing this. Uh, I figured it would be stuck on there because of the RTV sealant, but... I gave it some uh, some love taps with a dead blow mallet to make sure I didn't damage anything and realize that it's not coming so I decided to go through and methodically double check and see if I can't see if I've missed anything and then I noticed this five millimeter small little bolt that matches all the other ones on the side here actually looks like it's attaching this uh, this little piece right here that sticks up from the uh, from the cylinder head to the uh, to the cover there so that little five millimeter right there is gonna have to come out and then if that still doesn't break free then I'm going to uh, remove this inspection cover and see if there's something hidden in there right here there's an inspection cover well to get the uh, ratchet in there I actually got the ratchet to slip in there just barely clearing this uh, pipe assembly here and then uh, unfortunately the ratchet was in the wrong 
uh, direction it was in tight instead of loosen and now when I try and get it out I can't get it out because that's how tight this was in there so I should have just done what I'm gonna do now I should have just did this in the first place I'm gonna remove this bolt so I can loosen this assembly this tube assembly right here it's like a Y pipe thing it goes into a down into this part of the motor here and then it goes also down the front here and then it just kind of ends up over here but uh, I'll have to check that out, see if I can't find out a little bit more about how that's supposed to work. Okay, tapping on it and gently prying. I got the uh, front cover to start to lift up just a, about a sixteenth of an inch, if that. But the back doesn't want to come off at all. It still seems pretty darn tight. So I think there might be still something retaining it back here. So I'm going to take off this inspection plate and see what I can see. Okay, underneath this inspection plate... Uh, or inspection cover what we've got is we've got the uh, the valve lash uh, valve clearance adjustments for the intake valves uh, the reason why I know they're the intake valves is because the intakes right here so um, and then these two covers here are probably your exhaust valve clearance ports uh, take those out probably to to adjust the uh, valve lash on the uh, exhaust valve and then of course uh, as I suspected right underneath this inspection cover there is your secret bolt that's holding on the back here so it's a good thing I didn't force this um, so I'm going to take that bolt out um, not too I mean it looks pretty clean in there it doesn't look too bad the actual head of the bolt itself here is pretty badly rusted but the other stuff that's in here is still some oil in there which is good and there we go that last bolt was the key to getting this cover off. Uh, things look good inside this cover. Nice and clean. I see oil. I don't see any scoring on the uh, journals here where the camshaft rides. This is an overhead cam engine. Anyways, the uh, camshaft sits right here. It's driven by this chain. The chain goes down inside the motor and uh, rotates the camshaft camshaft as it turns around these lobes will press on these little rocker arms that you see inside here um, they actually just pivot up and down so you can see this part right here rides on the uh, camshaft lobe and then that causes us to pivot back and forth and then those press down on the tops of the valve stems right here and then the springs obviously are what makes the uh, valve want to close back up after it's pressed open and then the rocker moves back and then the spring makes it come back up. So these are your intake valves, these are your exhaust valves. This is um, a four valve engine even though it's a single cylinder and it's uh, got two intake ports and two exhaust ports. So these right here, one, two, three, four, these are your four cylinder heads bolts and uh, this little thing that I unscrewed the the, um, the little tiny bolt out of it turns out that that's just a plug that comes out and that's seals with an o-ring so I'm going to take that out now so it doesn't fall out and get lost later so I could uh, take the four bolts out and then try and remove the cylinder head but there's a few other steps I've got to do first I've got to uh, disconnect that chain off of the camshaft because uh, I'm not going to be able to lift this up with that attached. Also I've got to disconnect my uh, intake port here on the carburetor and I've got to disconnect my two exhaust pipes from the uh, exhaust ports on the uh, head. So now I'm going to move away from messing with the cylinder head and work on getting this uh, intake manifold off. Get the manifold off, I'm going to have to pull the carburetor anyways. The carburetor obviously needs to be cleaned. It's all gummed up at the very least. I'm hoping it's not corroded. And then uh, to get the carburetor out, really to make that easier, it's going to be a matter of taking this boot off, which to get that out is a matter of taking the airbox out. So I'm going to start with taking the airbox out and then removing the carburetor, and then I'll get this intake manifold off the head. Or I might, I, I might even just leave that on there uh, until I get the head off of the machine. We'll see. 
Okay, I've removed the air box, three bolts, and loosened the clamp right here, and that comes right off the carburetor. Then you loosen the other clamp on the carburetor, and you can pop the carburetor off the intake manifold. You unscrew this plastic nut that actually threads right into the side here, and this is your choke assembly comes right out. This is very similar to the Arctic Cat 454 carburetor setup. Uh, it's got a diaphragm underneath here and a slide, and your main needle jet right there. Uh, so this looks a lot like a Makumi. Uh, once I get it out, I'll be able to check it out. Now I've just got to disconnect the throttle cable and the carburetor will be free and clear and be able to completely be removed from the motor. And it looks like the uh, uh, the idle adjustment uh, is completely broken. Somebody tried turning that while it was all rusty and snapped right off. That's right, right there.